Hi, Alvin Stratton from Aswood Turns. Yes, I have been on a goblet spree. I wanted to explore goblets again. Most of the goblets I've seen in the past have a very flat bottom or at best a carved out bottom because it's done very last and you don't have any way to hold it. And I wanted to, with these two, I wanted to explore how a goblet might warp if, warp if it's turned green and also to address the bottom a little bit better. Uh, refined the process a bit more to turn one out of solid. Uh, these two being solid in one piece, uh, a steady is a necessity in my opinion. And then, well, why not another three piece? No steady required here, but segmented. And why not? It's a whole lot of fun to do this and see what else you can do to make things that are pretty. So let's turn this segmented goblet. I will not show how to cut and glue segments into rings. That is covered very well in other videos. I have prepared rings of maple, walnut, cherry, and frogwood and split most of them into halves or thirds. I have stacked them into a good order for the base and bowl portions. I start by gluing rings together onto separate faceplates. Then I decided to start another faceplate for the top of the bowl portion and going down. Doing them on separate faceplates enables me to use the lathe to center the faceplates and remove them as quickly as possible, usually within 5 to 10 minutes. Then allow them to dry more while I add rings to a different stack. For some of the rings, I added clamps where the center pressure could distort the ring. This goblet has 19 rings and a total of 228 segments with 12 segments per ring. As I worked on gluing the rings, I decided that one quarter inch maple ring next to the stem would not be enough for the tenon on the stem. So while I did all this gluing, I made another two maple rings. But I will have to glue them on later since I started this glue up from the stem downward and upwards. I have a few extra rings that will have to go on some future project. With all that preparation work finished, I can start on the bottom portion of the bowl. The exterior has points at the joints and the wood is hard and dry. I am not super aggressive with my gouge to avoid splintering the wood at the joint until the wood is continuously round. For the interior, my preferred tool is a heavy bowl scraper. Shavings stream out continuously, almost as if it were wet. But no, this is very dry wood. Then switch to the top portion of the bowl. The blue wood will be the rim. For now, I'm hollowing the interior with a scraper. The only difference is that the blue frog wood does not stream out like solid wood since it is already a glue up of thin veneers. There's not much wood removal on the exterior. Then touch a sanding board to the surface before gluing the two portions together. With that glue dry, I can remove any differential at the glue joint, both inside and outside. Then move on to final shaping. This is with careful cuts, mostly as shear cuts. Then sand and apply shellac to this bowl portion. With finish on the bowl portion, I now need to part off the bowl from the faceplate. To work the bottom of the bowl portion, I have mounted it in my DIY donut chuck. I need to clean up the last vestiges of the faceplate and prepare to glue on the additional maple ring.
While that glue dries, I switch to the base glue up. For future needs, I'm drawing a 1.75 mortise that will fit my long nose jaws later. Then proceed to shape the base both inside and outside. I also sand it and apply shellac to the base inside. Next, to part off the base, then reverse it onto the long nose jaws with an expansion mount. There is enough wood in the two bottom rings that I am not worried too much about splitting it with an expansion pressure. Then, more shaping and prepare this for its additional maple ring. With that glue dry for the base, I am drilling for the mortise before I forget. A half inch mortise should be sufficient, then turn down the new ring and do the final shaping. This is spindle gouge turf for me. With the base sanded, a little shellac brings the wood to life. Same thing for the bowl. This is still mounted in my donut chuck, which makes for tight quarters. Drill for the mortise and shape similarly to the base. and give it a good shellacking. After dismounting, I can view it to decide how long to make the stem. This stem is actually a double-ended finial. Since the goblet is fairly large, I will not make it super skinny. It needs to blend with the rest. This wood is maple. To me, finials are skew territory. While it could be cut with other tools, to me, the skew leaves the most serve smooth surface. I would pick up a spindle gouge if I had a tight radius cove. However, these gentle coves and flowing beads are very compatible with my skew. The most technical part of the stem are the tenons on both ends that must fit well to the mortises on the bowl and the vase. After sanding, I can burn some lines in for interest and finish with shellac. This is a great ending for this series of goblets. I started with green wood to explore warping, developed a new process for wet and dry goblets, and ended with a three-piece segmented large goblet. Each has its own unique personality. I love them.
Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life, and that is why I keep harping on this topic. And it can save yours, but only if you use it. I will see you again next week with another wood turning video.